So hello, we're here with Darren from uh, Psyche. Hello. Thank you very much for this interview. You're so you've just played here at, at the Rewind Festival yeah. in Ghent. Did you enjoy the concert? Yeah, it was really, really cool. Very nice, big stage. Yeah, you were <laughs> playing very early in, in yeah. the lineup. Someone has to do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, uh, you, you managed to, there were, there were a lot of, lot of people uh, yeah. dancing yeah. and moving around. Yeah. What was the set list uh, mainly made of? Yeah, it was a mixture of yeah. It was a, it was a strange mix. It was a very sort of uh, gothic, dramatic introduction um, yeah. from from actually songs from the uh, last album, the Eleventh Hour, and then we moved into the '80s stuff, and then uh, we ended with um, our cover version of Goodbye Horses, which yeah. has become very popular. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if we go back to the origins of, yeah. of the band. I think the name of the band is after a song by Killing Joke. Yeah, it is. It is actually. Yeah. But with two S. Yeah, I don't know why they spelled it with two S's. Maybe they were making some kind of uh, comment on um, fascism or something like that. And yeah. um, and I thought uh, when I first saw it, also I thought, well, it's spelled wrong. So we'll just. <laughs> um, but I like I like the sound the the sound of that particular song, and um, I was a fan of all the post punk stuff, Bauhaus, Killing Joke, and all that kind of thing. And so I thought um, this. This could represent us. But also, I like the meaning of the word psyche. Oh yeah, yeah. But it's not psychedelic. Not no, not psychedelic, and it's not um, this Greek goddess or whatever yeah. um, that people sometimes think. Um, it, you know, and the intelligence, the mind, the soul is what it says in the dictionary. I thought that covers it, so that's that's <laughs> it. That's our name. <laughs> yeah. But what most people don't know is that at the beginning you were more into industrial, like Fat Gadget and oh yeah, Pupping. oh yeah, yeah. We were we started out with um, Cabaret Voltaire, Fat Gadget, that kind of stuff, and and also like groups like The Cure and things like that, and, and Gary Newman. Um, I think yeah. almost everyone had heard Cars or something from Gary yeah. Newman. So so it was like. Yeah, uh, when we saw groups like DAF and then also Soft Cell, yeah. uh, and we thought, yeah, two people can do do it all. That was like, okay, well, we had a lot of trouble trying to find a drummer or anybody else to join the band, and it was my brother and I. So yeah. we thought, yeah, well, if we're brothers. We're, we're stuck to, yeah. <laughs> stuck together for now. Let's uh -huh. let's just make the band. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But uh, how did the evolution uh, happen between the, the the first style and then the evolution to to something more electro pop? Um, actually, that's Guinea Puppy's fault. Um, <laughs> when we oh, yeah. when we first started, we were actually the only sort of horror goth uh, electro band in Canada. In Canada, yeah. And Skinny Puppy was pretty much around the same time, but developing on another side of Canada. Yeah. And then, uh, as we discovered that we both released sort of like our first EPs um, around the same time, uh, and it was working out well for for both groups but we felt um i didn't want that to be my life forever i didn't i liked alien sex fiend was another yeah. influence and i i thought uh but do i really want to be in the 30s and 40s do i still want to be doing exactly that kind of music and yeah. um so we you know we we made this effort to sort of move it a little bit more poppy yeah But yeah. not too poppy, more more into the not, dark, dark electro pop. Yeah, for a while, you know, we were like closer to that new order kind of thing. Yeah. But like, it still has that melancholia. Yeah. It's not like super happy. It's not yeah, Rick Astley yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, uh, they, they, you, you don't like to be compared to, to uh, just, just too poppy, poppy kind of music. It's more like a dark electro. Pop. Yeah, I mean, most people usually always, uh, you know, compare it us to Soft Cell and Mark Almond, yeah. which of is course. actually appropriate yeah, for sense. me because it was my my hero anyway. Yeah. And, um, did, and you uh, meet him? Uh, did, did never you met him? him? Never met him. And the other people that I liked was like Eurythmics and stuff yeah. like that. And never met them. And Gary Newman, I met for five minutes with my dad when he uh -huh. brought my brother and I to a concert because we were underage. Oh yeah. And, um, <laughs> and uh, we, you know, hi, we're <laughs> little kids and we like you. <laughs> <laughs> Doughty <Don't he> remembers. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> But we met Cabaret Voltaire, so I'm very proud of oh, that. Yeah. Yeah, oh they're, yeah, they're yeah. Really, they were really, really nice, and it was at the height of their fame with um, Sensoria. Oh yeah, Sensoria. And I, I'll be honest, I learned from Cabaret Voltaire that um, you should really treat your fans with respect and if people wait after the concert for a long time just to see their idols and come with like 50 albums that they want to have signed, yeah. um, I, I think it's not a bad thing to have like if it's like not like a massive mm -hmm. audience because they're a cult band as well and you can have 
20 people visit yeah. you and, and take the time yeah. because that dedicates That's what fans. you do tonight. <laughs> and that's, it's what I do actually ever since I had a, at the, at this, this backstage with Kevin yeah. Voltaire. Uh, I thought, if, if you know, for me, they were like way up there yeah. and, and, and they said, sit down, have a beer, yeah, you know, and I was great. like, yeah. okay, this is the way it should be actually, if it's possible. Yeah. You know, not when you're playing in the stadium, then you can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and do you think that, you, I know it's, it's always a tricky question, but do you think that you sort of were a sort of forerunner of some kind of dark electro, dark wave? Yeah. Uh, that sort of developed really in the 90s? I, I think, it, I'd like to say that we have something to do with that, because at the time, the only other band that you could say that was in that um, direction was Clan of Zymox. Yeah. And, and Alien Sex Fiend, I mean, uh, these are not completely electronic bands. Mm -hmm. So we were the first band that actually really sort of, I, I would say with our album The Influence and also the first song Brain Collapses yeah. was, I mean, as dark as you can get with like electronic music. Yeah. And we even got compared to like stuff like Sisters of Mercy, which, you know, we had nothing mm -hmm. to do with. But yeah. when we first released the first album, the people didn't know where do we put that. So, you know, it's not, it's electronic, but it's very dark. So yeah, yeah. that was, and then this word dark wave appeared in the 90s. And I was like, oh, that's probably what we did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, because when you listen to Copland and this kind of bands, I mean, yeah. there, there is clearly a, a link. Yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. Uh, one of the songs that you played tonight, was it The Quickening? Oh, we didn't do The Quickening tonight. Yeah, I know we were yes. asked to do that, but we did. Yeah. Um, well, the, the first, our opening song, Buried Alive, is Buried very Alive. gothic. Yeah. And, um, and Break Collapse is our, our very first song, um, is, is also, you know, quite dark. Um, even the song 15 Minutes, we did really a, a solid four dark wave songs to start yeah. with. So, yeah. And, but we are known as the synth pop band because of songs like Uncivilized, which we also played. Yeah. So, you know, we vary between those two genres <laughs> okay and, and what are your projects now uh, for the for the next months yeah i'm uh in between the shows when i have a little bit more time i'm really seriously trying to make a new album because it has actually been seven years now yeah. and um was it the 11th hour the 11th hour yeah. was really the last album and um and it, it was sort of purposely also called the 11th hour because i wanted to i put myself in a corner by saying Uh, you know, we're near the end. What, what can possibly follow the 11th oh, yeah. hour? And I'm, I'm trying to figure that out myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I think when you take a long break... What about the 12th hour? <laughs> well, uh, the, the, the 12th day or some kind of... You know, and I was thinking... The next day. Yeah, the David Bowie, I know. I was like, damn it, damn it. He's got the title for it. Yeah, you. yeah. But I really... Uh, um, uh, or you, you, you disappear for so long that now when you come back, the, the expectations, you know, like how, usually you're expected to follow a particular sound And uh, now it's sort of like anything could go. So like we, we could we could come up with a trash punk album with some synthies, yeah. and and they'd be like, oh whoa, they really you know went somewhere else, and and that's what I, I want that freedom. Mm -hmm. So because I felt a little bit cornered with my idea that okay we're getting darker, we're getting darker, and then, so the and, next one will be different. Yeah, I, I think it's it In won't sense. it won't be quite as as heavy and moody. Um, But I, I think that it will. Uh, it's not going to be some super pop thing. It's going to be uh, still atmospheric. And I, I've learned over the years that my vocal does sort of define what yeah. psyche is. So yeah. Um, yeah. that that's important to me to put my voice in, in focus and and, and really uh, present exactly what it is I am as a singer. So yeah. Yeah. I was amazed by, by your voice uh, at the, the concert tonight. I yeah, mean, I mean, it's, it's really very powerful. The bit, the the, the, the last part of uh, "Buried the Life" was amazing. Oh yeah, it's, that's kind of hard to get to that level. I mean, when I was younger, I couldn't really do that because I would lose my voice, and um, I really I tend to put it all into the one show even if it's only 40 minutes or something yeah. like that. And so it's not like the kind of thing I could do like three nights in a row. Yeah. Um, And that, that's why I don't like to do those kind of tours. I don't yeah. do those nightliner tours because I, I want to give the audience like the whole the maximum. thing. <laughs> so, um, but I have become better as a singer. I mean, obviously, yeah. I, I was, I, I'm not a trained singer and I have slowly trained and I have um, had sounds like some development. I've, I've learned from, from yeah. other people. And, and the power, um, I mean, uh, yeah. how did you develop this? I, I, I have learned a lot from other people who did do singing, uh, teaching singing and so on. And, um, and I know that there is breathing exercises to, yeah. to do. And, and then the rest is just, uh, you know, practicing. some people have uh, mm -hmm. the practicing and also then it's built, it becomes a part of you so that you, you know you're prepared when you go on the stage yeah. what you can offer. Yeah, and so. And when are you expecting the the next LP then? 
Um, I really wanted to have it out like for October this year because that's like our thirtieth year you're anniversary. Be releasing a single. Uh, I, I'm well, yeah yeah that's another thing everyone does now is like give away some free things. So uh, I also have to think about that. But um, I wanted actually I really like to have it like be a double album where it's like wow. uh, all like new stuff and then the second album is like a remix of of my favorite psyche mm -hmm. songs, but completely recorded as if we just wrote them now. Yeah. Would be a really interesting feeling, and we're actually we've already made Revisited. a couple. Revisited. Yes, yes. So we've made a few of those, and the new songs are still in the works. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward. Thanks. Thank you very much, Darren. Cool. <laughs> Thanks a lot.